Hundreds of different board games and accessories are released and restocked each month, and this month was no exception. So we're highlighting several top picks and suggestions, best bets, few wild cards, and more. We've got some great gaming gusto to give you in this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. Hey, I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and let's kick things off with several games that stood out and grabbed our attention this month, starting with Looney Tunes Mayhem, in which teams of tunes square off in a competition to collect five victory points. Now, Looney Tunes Mayhem is built on the Mayhem system, which is also featured in Teen Titans Go Mayhem. In both games, characters use items and powers to battle their opposing team, with the stakes changing each round based on the roll of a mayhem die. So if you're in the mood for some cartoon character craziness, you may want to check out either of those mayhem titles. And from iconic characters to an independent publisher's first factory-made game, we have Pathogen, in which two players compete, one as a doctor and the other playing as the plague itself. In this Taiwanese import, the competitors move and place influence tokens onto the map to either create a path or build up for settlements in order to win. In the end, either the tireless doctor will curb the pandemic or the plague will devour two different worlds. But that's okay, because there's even more worlds to discover in Galileo Project, which takes place 30 years after the events that occurred in another board game, Ganymede. Now, in Galileo Project, the same corporations that were pulling the strings in Ganymede now embark to settle four moons of Jupiter by acquiring robots from Earth and Mars, recruiting experts, developing technologies, and building superstructures. Players accomplish this by combining combos and building engines to provide their resources and abilities, which will be crucial to success, because a trip across the cosmos is especially dangerous. But. That is nothing compared to the danger that you may encounter on your simple daily commute in Monster Highway, where two to four daring drivers build roadways using tiles to each get back to their home base. But that's not as simple as it may seem, because after a nuclear meltdown at a nearby power plant, an agitated alligator has been transformed into a road-smashing, car-crushing monster. And now, no one is safe as they travel down the Monster Highway. But Fear not, not all monsters are smashing their way down the highway. Some monsters are lurking within us. Such as in the case of The Mirroring of Mary King, a two-player game in which one person is a mild-mannered human person, Mary King, and the other is the ghost of Mary's long-dead ancestor, a 17th century Scottish merchant, coincidentally with the same name, who wants nothing more than to rejoin the land of the living by possessing her namesake's body. You know, that old theme. Now, the two Marys engage in a battle for control by using cards to exert their influence on Mary's psyche, represented by a 4x3 grid of tiles. My immediate reaction after discovering this game was, what? But wow, this, this sounds like a really interesting approach to resolving a literal life and death, or perhaps life and after death struggle. But. If you want to raise the stakes even higher than that, well, we can do that with DEFCON, in which global mega powers escalate an arms race in preparation for a global scale conflict. See, the life of a nation on the global stage is not an easy one, as internal frictions push their decision makers to consolidate their power, even if it escalates international rivalries. And the only way to stay ahead of the pack is to remain in control of both their nation's diplomatic reputation and military strength without losing support of the court of public opinion. Oh, <laughs> pull that off, and you may just avoid a global-scale international calamity. <laughs> Maybe. And with all these games raising our tensions that high, now may be a good time to just stop, relax, and take your dog for a walk. Because dogs don't care about international, diplomatic, economic interdependencies. They're just happy to be anywhere. Such as The Dog Park, a mid-weight, competitive set collection and point-to-point -point movement game in which dutiful dog walkers recruit, walk, and care for their collection of canines to best earn reputation and prove that they're the most accomplished walker of them all. And there's more than you'd think. Dog walkers, that is. You probably realize how many dogs there are. Which is important, because at the end of the game, the player with the most reputation is the cat's meow. 
And another game that won't leave you barking up the wrong tree is the first one that helped make this episode possible, Oros from Lucky Duck Games. In Oros, demigods instruct their followers in the wisdom of the mountains through study, worship, and experience in this game of strategy where players shift the land itself, erupt volcanoes, build shrines, and shepherd their faithful towards universal knowledge and victory. Along the way, actions can be customized by strategically moving resources and manipulating a shared environment like a giant puzzle by sliding the land and colliding tiles on a shared board. Every action is a puzzle of creative problem solving, abstract thinking, and constantly evolving your strategy. Oros is hot off the press, having arrived in stores on January 23rd, so follow the link in this video's description to locate a copy and start moving mountains. Literally. This was a big month for big boxes, whether it was special collections or anniversary editions that packaged previously partitioned pieces into a predominant presentation. So let's take a look at several of these cardboard compilations in this special segment, starting with the recently released Isle of Sky big box, in which leaders of Scottish clans create communities in order to gain victory points. But in each game, only four of 24 possible scorecards are in play, causing each game to require different tactics and strategies. This big box edition contains the award-winning Isle of Sky base game, its Druids expansion, additional scoring and tunnel tiles, and a new mini expansion, Rond Gibita, which, when pronounced correctly, means border area. But once you have started building your township, well, don't stop there. Continue your civic expansion in Between Two Cities Essential Edition, a 30-minute tile drafting game for one to seven players in which each player is a member of two different teams. Partnership with the player on their left, maybe that's your left, but my left would be, you know, one person, and the other partnership with the other person, be it left and or right. You know, that old theme. Building a separate city with each of their partners in a simultaneous competition to score the most points in a shared city tile laying game experience. Now, the essential edition of Between Two Cities includes the original game and its capitals expansion, plus new art on some tiles and a score pad instead of a board. But other than that, there aren't any new rules or other gameplay elements introduced. So if you already own the base game and its expansion, well, then you already have everything you need and there's no need to panic. Unless you're playing the Castle Panic Big Box, which actually is right here. Bing. This is a cooperative light castle defense type strategy game for one to six players who must defend their castle in the center of the board from monsters that attack out of the forest that encircles them. To celebrate the game's 10 year anniversary, its publisher has produced this big box edition, which contains the original base game plus its expansions, the Wizard's Tower, the Dark Titan, Engines of War, plus seven promo cards and five unique tower tokens, and a rule book that has been completely updated. Also updated is Car Wars, which was first published in 1981 with a new sixth edition featuring freeways of the future in which vehicles come fully loaded with weapons, armor, and even their own built-in power plants, and then are taken to the road against other automotive adversaries. Drivers who <clears throat> survive improve their abilities and earn money to buy bigger and better cars. Car Wars' second edition is, was released quite a while ago because the sixth edition is what was released very recently, and this sixth edition also includes advanced rules for designing custom-made cars, trucks, and cycles. And also celebrating a milestone is Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, depending if you want to be fancy. This game was released in 10 years ago because it has now released its 10th anniversary edition, which was a decade. Yes. Just released is this game's 10th anniversary edition, which contains the base game, its new Personas expansion from 2009, a new person set of nine characters, plus a small expansion called Trade Routes for the completely different game, The Castles of Burgundy. Meanwhile, back in Notre Dame, influential French families compete for prosperity and reputation by controlling boroughs, advancing the power and prestige of their family. But those who don't also take care of their citizens while they do it will suffer a penalty. So in the end, accumulating the most prestige and winning the game will require both strategic planning and clever card play. But 
perhaps even craftier card play may be required in the deluxe edition of Cat in the Box, a trick-taking card game for two to five players that adds the twist that the color of the cards aren't defined until they're actually played. Additionally, players place tokens in a community research board throughout the hand in hopes of scoring even more points. This deluxe edition of the game features Geekbit style plastic tokens, which are pretty nice, recessed player boards, which are also really cool to have, and a center research board, a score pad, and a custom plastic insert to keep your box of cats oh so very tidy. And Balancing out all those cats that you're going to find in that game is a box of rats in the form of Ratus Big Box, which takes place in 1347 AD, where the plague spreads across Europe. And so, the settlers and citizens of the land will turn to various professionals for support, guidance, and survival. The Ratus Big Box includes the base game and its Pied Piper, Africanus, and Academicus expansions and upgraded tiles, plus additional guilds and inns and bonus modules with previously unpublished materials, promos, and bonus cards. And you know what? If you find these videos to be helpful and informative, well, then a subscription to the channel would be a bonus to us. But now, let's continue on to our next segment, What's in Store, where we check which games are actually on store shelves and search for some hidden gems. Here's an interesting one. Uh, this time, I found myself wandering through a local Walgreens, not a sponsor, but while I was there, I was surprised to discover a modest collection of games down one of the aisles. So, Curious, I took a closer look to see what kind of games a chain of corner convenience stores would carry. And here is a sampling of some of the highlights that I found. First off, not very surprising, was seeing a collection of games from the Exploding Kittens catalog on the shelves, including Throw Throw Burrito, Happy Salmon, Zombie Kittens, and Exploding Kittens itself. Games from Exploding Kittens seem to focus on lighthearted fun, so it would make sense to me that they'd be there because it seemed like a good fit for a convenience store chain to have them, where they could be ready and waiting to become a relatively inexpensive impulse purchase along with some chips and salsa for a regular get-together. Then, of course, there was a series of variations of familiar favorites as well. And I did find it especially interesting that nearly all of these titles added some sort of interjection to their name. There's Uno Dare, Uno Flip, Scrabble Slam! Uh, speaking of Scrabble Slam, this isn't so much a crossword game like the original as it is a word ladder where players start with one word and then morph it over the course of the game by playing cards from their hand to change one letter at a time. You know, that old thing. Among all these card-driven variations of big box titles that I saw was Monopoly Deal, which I still think is a standout among these, and I recommend giving Monopoly Deal a try if you can find it. Additionally, there was also a Catan dice game, which is a Yahtzee-style roll and write. And my biggest surprise on the shelves was discovered at the bottom of this end cap of playing cards, where I found a card-based mini escape room and murder mystery. Escape from the museum takes about 45 minutes to play through and contains 12 puzzles to solve, though feedback on the game suggests that some of the puzzle types are used more than once. And Murder at the Manor is a little mystery to solve that incorporates a bit of role-playing to help amplify the character-driven adventure. And for more character-driven adventure, be sure to check out the other game that helped make this episode possible, Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising from The Op, a cooperative character-driven card and dice game for one to five players based on the fantastic Avatar The Last Airbender animated series. Take command of Avatar Aang, Katara, Sokka, Toph, and Zuko as they fight back against the Fire Nation to restore balance to the world by first recruiting heroes from the Four Nations and then battling a variety of villains leading up to the Day of Black Sun and the culmination of the Hundred Year War. Players that manage to stay ahead of the Fire Nation will win the game, but that won't be easy because there's several different ways that the Fire Nation can gain the upper hand and cause defeat. So collect cards, collaborate together, and assemble a pool of dice based on your character's special abilities to claim victory and end the war once and for all. And you know what? It's no secret at all that I love both Avatar The Last Airbender and the Rising series of games, so be sure to follow the link in this video's description to find Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising from various retailers and directly from the op.games. And now, let's continue on to this month's best bets. If you're on the lookout for a hobby board game to enjoy, well, then in my opinion, any one of the following is worth looking into. 
Let's start with an expansion for a game that has real staying power, Plunder, the 15th expansion for the granddaddy of deck building games, Dominion. Now, as its name suggests, the focus of this expansion is on obtaining treasure through any means necessary. This suggests that this set may include a high number of attacks and player interaction in its collection of 500 cards, including 40 new kingdom cards. Plunder is also packed with lots of treasures and durations, cards that provide loot, and traits that modify piles, and a return of the event card type. With all that good stuff packed into this set, well, playing it may be an event in and of itself. But now, let's turn our attention to a more recent release, Sabika which sets the stage for nobles of the Nasrid dynasty to contribute to the construction of the towers, gardens, and palaces of the ancient monument, the Alhambra. Sabika integrates three interrelated rondelles into its gameplay. Each rondelle focuses on a different scenario, the construction of the Alhambra, the carving of poems in its halls, and the export of goods along its trade routes. Those who can balance all of these tasks will earn the most prestige and be in good company as the winner. But if you prefer instead to surround yourself with bad company, well then you may enjoy the game Bad Company, which is designed to support up to six players with as little downtime as possible. Each player has a board with 11 gang members who can be upgraded by placing overlapping cards onto them. Then, each turn, dice are rolled and the gangsters with the corresponding numbers are able to activate their abilities. If you enjoy other production building games like Machikoro or Space Base, well then you may also enjoy Bad Company which works on a similar system. Or you and your real life gang of 4 to 19 friends could try Blood on the Clock Tower, a game of opposing teams of good and evil overseen by a storyteller who conducts the action and makes crucial decisions to guide the gameplay. The goal is for the side of good to successfully deduce and execute the demons among them before those demons outnumber the innocent town folk. Some may find this type of game to be reminiscent of other large-scale social deduction games like Werewolf, but Blood on the Clock Tower provides each character with their own special ability, allowing no two players in a game to ever be the same character. And now we are reaching the part of the episode where I am starting to run low on the energy needed to make smooth segues between games, so let's replenish that energy with some beer and bread, as in the game Beer and Bread. Haha! <laughs> I did have a segue. It's a twist. This card game for two players utilizes multi-use cards and alternating rounds that puts its own twist on player interaction, card drafting, and resource management. Each player represents a rival village that produces these culinary staples and must optimize their duties of harvesting and storing resources, producing beer and bread, and then selling them to both earn income and upgrade their facilities, balancing their resources the entire time. And uh, if that bread is perhaps Lambda's bread, then maybe it can be of use in War of the Ring, the card game. See, I, I told you my segues were getting worse. In War of the Ring, the card game, up to four players compete in two teams, the Shadow against the Free Peoples, each player using a specific and different card deck representing the strengths and weaknesses of the different factions involved in the war. The Free Peoples desperately try to complete their quest to destroy the One Ring, while the Shadow players must strike quickly and decisively, or try to slowly corrupt Frodo, burdening him with wounds, toil, and the sorrow of the loss of his fellow companions. This is a game with ties to a movie adaptation that in turn, yes I'm working on a new segue, is based on a best-selling book, similar to the game that is this month's bestest bet, the Immortality Expansion for Dune Imperium, which is also a game based on a movie, based on a book, I did it, hooray. In this add-on for the game Dune Imperium, new player factions can advance their agenda by trading in genetic innovations. Will you hire lethal spies, or use your resources to regrow damaged tissue and organs, or dare to recruit units who have been brought back from the literal brink of death itself? Whichever path you employ will require making shadowy deals and unlocking the potential of your scientific research. And to continue your research into exciting new and upcoming board games, well join me for this month's Momentum episode where we are counting down which games are generating buzz and finding out why. Or check out any of Watch It Play's other informative instructional videos along the way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you over there.